Hey guys, Boshit here, and welcome back to Know Your Shit. Oh, sorry it took so freaking long to get this series rolling again. I do one video project at a time, and I had three, including another Idiot Box episode I wanted to do first. But, now that they're finished for the time being, let's get back into this. Today we're going to be learning how to make your video aesthetically pleasing by operating the camera tool and removing distractive elements like the heads-up display and other entities. Starting us off, we're going to be learning how to use one of the most important tools you'll be utilizing in your machinima, which is the camera tool. You'll be using this in conjunction with Fraps to make your video look its best. Open the build menu and select camera from the tool menu, set the camera's activation key, which I set as keypad 1, aim where you want your camera to point, and then hit the fire button with your tool gun out. Now that your camera's in place, hitting the activation key you set will allow you to look through its view. I would like to note that the camera tool has a static camera mode that you can specify before placing it. What this does is it makes the camera you set unable to be tampered with at all unless you place another one using the same activation key. While it sounds good in theory, in its current state it'll break if you choose to save your game and reload it later. Doing that will make the static camera stuck there for good and it holds the activation key you specified for it hostage. To prevent this, I would recommend you don't use the static camera at all if you plan on saving your game. With static camera turned off, the camera can be messed with now just like a regular prop. You can now do things with it like use the weld tool to stick it to cars and other things for cool effect, but that also means that once it's freshly placed, you can easily accidentally bump into it and lose your camera placement, which is a major problem for the consistency of the shot. To prevent this, just use the weld tool with the weld slider at zero and weld the camera to the world itself. And to make sure nothing can just plain bump into it, let's also use the no collide tool. Right clicking an object with this tool will ensure that any incoming props simply pass right through it. It's a little extra work, but if you save and reload the game, this type of camera can be removed with the remover tool, unlike the static camera. Hopefully that gets fixed soon. Now that your camera is all set up, one of the oldest and easier methods of moving a ragdoll on camera is by operating him with your fizz gun off camera. However, your fizz gun is still emitting a beam that really gets in the way. Well thankfully, Gmod has a drawing menu built into the game. It's great for hiding otherwise distracting game elements that would get in the way, and we're going to use it to hide that fizz gun beam. You can access it from the top of your window when you open the build menu, or the context menu when you hold C by default. Select the drawing menu and uncheck fizz gun beams. And just like that, the beam is gone. Now it looks much better, but we're certainly not done yet. Let's take a look at a scene here and see what else is wrong with it. You're going to notice a few things here. The bane of Gmod videos have always been the health and ammo meter that people forget to hide before recording. I know I was guilty of this when I first started out. Another problem is the kill notification on the top right when a player or NPC dies in the world. Third is that annoying little green circle in the background there. These are just a few things we'll be removing, and in order to do that, we're going to need our developer console enabled, which is another very important tool to use in your video. Let's make sure the console is enabled first by going to the escape menu and to options. There you'll see a keyboard tab, and through here is the button called advanced options. Enabling developer console is what we want, so let's check that. Now apply your settings and hit OK. You'll now notice that when you strike the grave key that looks like this on your keyboard, the console comes up. Let's go ahead and use it to get rid of the health meter first. Bring up the console and type CL underscore draw HUD space zero to turn it off. If you want to turn it back on again, which I often do because I need the crosshair sometimes, you'll need to type the same thing but replace the zero with a one. Now you're probably asking, oh great, do I seriously have to type that in every time I want to switch that on and off? Technically yes, but we're going to learn a new process called binding keys. By using key bindings, you can bind entire commands to just the press of a key, making this a lot quicker and easier. The way to do this is to open the console again and type bind, space, the key you want, space, and in quotation marks, the command you want that key to perform. 
That seems pretty easy, right? Let's go ahead and put it into practice. I'm going to bind the P key to turning the health and ammo meter off. So we'll go ahead and type bind space P space CL underscore draw HUD zero in quotation marks. And just like that, hitting P will switch it off. Now I'll bind the O key to turning it back on. Same as before, bind space O space CL underscore draw HUD one. And just like that, pressing these two keys makes switching on and off the combat HUD a breeze. Remember how to perform key bindings because you're going to need it for a command we'll be learning at the end of this video. Next, let's get rid of that death notifier in the top right hand corner of the screen. Since this serves no practical purpose during your filming process, no real key binding to turn it back on will be necessary. Let's just go ahead and turn it off using the console again. The command for this one is hud underscore death notice underscore time space zero. Now let's look at that little green ring. These are here only on certain props because they don't have any real physics properties and are classified as effects. This in mind, the green ring is only there to help make it easier to grab the effect with your fizz gun. I really do not recommend you use any props with this attribute for anything other than background decorations. You will pull your hair out trying to weld them to ragdolls or animate them in anything other than stop motion. To hide the green ring, we're going to be using the transparency slider on the color tool. Normally this setting is ideal for making entire props invisible, but in this case it's actually used to make only the green ring disappear, like so... What? Okay, so apparently a trick that's worked since the beginning doesn't anymore. Alright, look, if you're left with no other option than to use a green ringed prop, I had a friend of mine whip up a tool in the Steam Workshop that can be executed with the console. I've provided a link to it in the description, so just click that, make sure you're signed into Steam, and hit the subscribe button. Now just open Gary's Mod again, and by following the console commands provided in the instructions to the mod, you can turn the green ring on and off easily now. Sometimes we make mistakes and accidentally hit a ragdoll with a weapon. That's gonna look pretty out of place in your next scene, isn't it? No worries, blood, bullet holes, burn marks, and anything that the paint tool does are considered decals to the game, and every single one of these can be removed with one console command. Go on into the console and type R underscore clear decals, and just like that, all decals that have been applied anywhere in the world are now gone. Now, remember what I said about the importance of key bindings? Well, this next console command requires the use of them. This particular command will hide everything HUD and menu based. The combat HUD, the death notifier, the lure errors, the tool gun tooltip, the build menu, the escape menu, even the console, all of these will vanish with this command. We're going to bind a key for the enable portion of this command first, because if you turn these elements off without having an enable key ready, there's no way to really see how to turn them back on, let alone quit the game. You would literally have to force quit the game and come back into it to get these elements restored. So let's bind the enable key right now. For me, I use the page up key for this. Bind space PGUP space R underscore draw VGUI one in quotation marks. There, now that the page up key will be the enable function, it's time to bind the page down key for the disable portion of the command. Bind space PGDN space R underscore draw VGUI space zero in quotation marks. And just like that, these two will toggle on and off all menu items and notifications that are really stubborn and in the way, like those pesky Lua errors. Alright, that covers this lesson for now. It's a bit of extra work, but if viewer immersion is important to your presentation, these elements really do need to be hidden away, so try to make sure everything is hidden before you hit your record hotkey. The combat meter can be difficult to remember, but it'll become second nature to you as time goes on, you'll see. 
be sure to join me next time as we look into some cool tricks that will most likely come in handy for later. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.